when once you post the adjustment, the adjust cost process is going to run. It's going to see that you've sold it already and go adjust your cost of goods sold associated with that sales invoice. Ken and Michael back for the featured segment of Business Central or shot of Business Central on a beer. And uh, today we're going to be talking about inventory adjustments. So Ken, you know, I got some uh, quantity quantities that need to be adjusted and then my dollar, my dollars are off on the, the values. So, uh, you know, how do I go about doing this? And even tell me a little bit more about, you know, maybe what, what inventory adjustments are. So yeah. I know. Yep. So this is a, an oldie, but a goodie, right? Um, so this is not, you know, sometimes we always focus on the new features of what's, what's new and exciting and, right. and coming out and sexy. Uh, this is like a nuts and bolts, feature that any company that has inventory items needs to understand how do I do, how do I adjust inventory? What's the best way to adjust my inventory? Um, and so there's really two different types of adjustments that we can do. The first is quantity adjustments. So if we're going to just adjust the quantity of how many you have on hand, let's, let's say you, the system thinks you had a hundred on hand, you go out there and you actually counted it. Um, and there's there's only uh, 95, so you need to remove, do a ne negatively adjust five out. Um, there's 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 the what's called the item journal page. So the easiest way to do it is you go into the item journal page, you put in today's date, you tell it you want to do a negative adjustment, you pick your item number, your mm -hmm. quantity, and you hit the post button. Simple enough. Easy. If you're using advanced warehouse management. Um, you use what's called the warehouse item journal. Same steps. Um, the only difference is what you're doing there with the advanced warehouse is you're reducing the quantities that are available in that bin. And then there's a second step that has to be run in the item journal where you pull in those adjustments to adjust the value, the dollar value of inventory. Okay. So, so with advanced warehousing, they've kind of split it into a, right, so, so that warehouse personnel are not directly impacting the financial statements. Gotcha. But basically, it's, it's, a, it's a journal page. You enter the item, the quantity, the date, hit the post button, right? Okay. Uh, so straightforward. Uh, you can also, if you, maybe you have more than you thought. Instead of 100, you actually have 105. Same exact process. You just do a positive adjustment. Now, the one little caveat, when you do a positive adjustment of inventory, you're basically creating inventory out of thin air as far as the system's concerned. So there is a unit cost field in the item journal. So you go in there, you say, okay, today I'm going to record, add five more of these widgets in inventory. It's going to populate that unit cost with your current average cost mm -hmm. for that item. So my recommendation is most people, you should hide that field or, or um, right, just ignore it or not allow the user to change it um, because they act, the user actually could type anything they want in there. They type a million dollars, you now have you now have another million dollars yeah. of inventory. Or, or right? too, too little, yeah. Right. <laughs> so on the negative adjustments, the system is going to do a FIFO application of the cost so on a negative adjustment, the user, whatever, the user could type a million dollars in there, but the adjust cost process is going to override that and, and correct it based on your cost layers. So what, for, for, for so, some of us layman's people, what, what's a FIFO? First in, first out. First in, first out. So it's just going to grab the oldest layer of inventory and say, okay, I'm applying this negative adjustment against this oldest layer of inventory. Let's reduce that. Right? Um, unless you're lot tracked. In which case, it'll actually reduce the quantity of that specific lot, right? right? But on a positive adjustment, you're adding to inventory. So when the user uh, updates that unit cost field, that is what the system is going to put that in inventory at. So <laughs> you just have to be a little careful on that, right? So those are those are quantity adjustments. Really straightforward. Yeah, pretty simple. Um, there is a separate physical inventory journal. Right. So if you're doing a periodic physical count or cycle count, there is a physical inventory journal that you can use 
Um, usually that's more like where you're gonna, you're gonna count a whole bunch of items at once. Mm -hmm. And then you're gonna wanna record your counted quantities. Um, it's just another journal, it works very similarly. There's a couple little added features in there. Yeah. Um, but that's, that's pretty straightforward. And most people understand how to do these quantity adjustments. The little known, um, lesser known uh, feature within Business Central is the revaluation journal. So now let's say we correct your inventory and we've now got 105 on hand, but they're in there at a dollar a piece. And you say, you know what? This is totally wrong. This should be in there at $5 a piece. I don't know. Someone just entered it wrong. Uh, maybe when you were doing your positive adjustment, you, you put in the wrong unit cost and you threw it off. For sure. <laughs> so what you could possibly do is do a negative adjustment of 105, right? Start fresh, basically. And then add a new 105 at the right cost. That's not the recommended approach okay? because you're, you're, you're now adjusting, you're creating additional item ledger entries and changing your app, your FIFO right. layers. Adjustment, yeah. Right. Yeah. So what you, the revaluation journal is a page. So what you can do is you can go in there and you can do it one of two ways. You can either say, go grab all my inventory that's currently on hand for this item. And I want to revalue it. So, oh yeah. So we have 105 pull in that 105, you see that it's currently valued at $1. There's another field called revalued uh, cost. You put $5 in there and you post it. And what it does is it actually doesn't create any item ledger entries, but it creates what's called a value entry underneath the existing item ledger entry to add $4 more to the value of it. Okay. So that's, that's, that's your so it keeps okay. your item ledger entries clean, but now you've got this history in, in the underlying value entries that say, well, it was originally $1, and then I went in and I did a revaluation journal on this date to add four more dollars. And then it sums those up to give you your total of $5. Right? Makes sense. So that's that's uh, one way, and, and that's really common in commodities. So let's say you know, you've got all this steel on hand mm -hmm. metals uh, or, or other types of commodity type materials. You've got all this on hand and now the value of it went down. Well, the lower of cost or market rule from an accounting perspective says that you need to revalue that at the end of your reporting period. So that would be the, how I, how, the easiest way to do it. Let's say we've got to revalue this down based on the current market prices. So is there a hard way to do it? Well, the, 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 the hard way would be to do it through item quantity adjustments. Okay. And now with when you consider reservations or inventory allocations, you're creating even more hurdles and problems for yourself. So the revaluation journal is the easiest way to do it. Gotcha. Uh, the last little tidbit is sometimes, um, maybe most of your, your inventory cost layers are correct, but there's one cost layer that's in there that's wrong you actually can go into the revaluation re journal, enter your item number, and then use the applies to button to pick an existing cost layer that you wanna update. And it will update just that cost layer. And here's the best feature, go ahead. So no, I was gonna say, that. It's, uh, you kinda lost me at the All right, so, so let, let's, again, say, let's say we bought a bunch of widgets, All right. Um, right? So we bought some in January at $1 a piece. Mm -hmm. We bought some in February at $2 a piece, and we bought some in March at $3 a piece. Okay. And you decide that, you know, those that came in in March at $3 a piece, though that was wrong. Right. Someone made an error. I need to revalue those March ones down to $1.50 or something. Right? So you would do this is where you would do this. I would go pick that specific okay. cost layer. And I would revalue the entire cost layer from three dollars down to one fifty. Okay. And 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 uh, if you're paying close attention here, you might say, "Well, wait a minute. What if I've already sold that to a customer? I've already shipped and invoiced it to the customer. Guess what? You still can do it when once you post the adjustment, the adjust cost process is going to run. It's going to see that you've sold it already." 
and go adjust your cost of goods sold associated with that sales invoice. Couldn't the price be wrong though then? Depending on what you sold it for and what? Well, what you sold it for is what you sold it for, right? Okay. So we're, we're, we're assuming that's correct. Okay. But your profit margin on that invoice was wrong if, if it used the $3 cost, right? Okay. So we're saying now our cost really wasn't $3. It was really only $1.50. So we're actually going and we're, we're you know, most systems, by the way, wouldn't do that. No. Most systems would say, oh, you've already shipped an invoice that your your statistics, your profitability statistics on that posted invoice are are done. They are what they are. NAV Business Central will go update the cost associated with that and give you the correct adjusted profit percentages. Nice. So there's just some really cool things. So so takeaways are one. Quantity adjustments, pretty straightforward. Positive adjustment, negative adjustments. Mm -hmm. If you're using it, warehouse management, use the warehouse item journal, and then a second step to calculate that value into the item journal. And then valuation changes, use the revaluation journal. Um, not a lot of people understand that the revaluation journal is there or how and when to use it. So that's why I thought it would be a, kind of, a, it's always important. And, it, and is really- common accounting practice or no? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, now, you, you know, I, I mean, we're not, I'm not I'm a certified accountant here to, to guide people, but um, there are certainly instances, either errors or lower of cost or market or other cases where you need to update the value of existing inventory. And the revaluation journal is how you do it. Nice. So that's. <clears throat> Sounds like a pretty good feature. That's some. I uh, do not know very much about that feature. Yeah, well, it's Anything it's so? freaking accounting, man. That's like <laughs> right. Uh, this is the weed development world of. We're like you got you're you're standing in like six feet of weed right now. And, <laughs> That's uh, awesome. And this is so so you either you either fast forwarded through this segment and you didn't even understand a word I said, or if this is what you do and need to do on a regular basis, you're like rewind, pause. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Whoa. Or is that what good. what can I do? Yeah. How do I do that? Awesome. Uh, good. I'm glad it'll be helpful for a bunch of people. I hope so. Pretty good.